Good morning, or good afternoon, or good midnight, whatever time it is for you. I feel it's time we take a look at perhaps the most infamous character from Undertale, <laughs> the legendary prankster Sans. This is a character who is enigmatic, pretty badass, and sometimes even kind of scary. He's also a fan favourite. He's the third major character we meet after Flowey and Toriel, though he soon soars beyond such a humble beginning. If you get on the wrong side of him and commit to the genocide path, he becomes not only a monster you have to defeat, but easily the hardest boss in the game. What's interesting about that, of course, is if you never complete a genocide playthrough, you'd never even realise how powerful he is. What makes him so powerful? Is Sans even really a monster? Why is he so popular? How does he get away with using Comic Sans, the most universally despised font in the world? Well, we've got a ton of stuff to get through, so this is probably going to be a long one. Let's see how much we can find out about Sans, the so-called legendary fart master. Yeah, that's seriously something he says. We first meet Sans after either sparing or killing Toriel and leaving the ruins. I would say that first impressions alone tell you everything you need to know about him, but uh, it really doesn't actually. This first sequence is incredibly eerie as you hear nothing but the ambient hum of who knows what as something lurks behind you in the shadows. When I first played through Undertale, I imagined the game was about to take an incredibly dark turn from this moment alone. The tension builds and builds, and I found myself wondering just what the heck exactly I'd gotten myself into. Uh, then this happens. Oh, well that's a relief. It's just a skeleton wearing a hoodie and grinning like a maniac. I see those every Friday night myself, so immediately I was in familiar territory once again. While you're recovering from the fright of the whoopee cushion scare, Sans explains that he's a sentry here in Snowdin. His purpose is to capture humans like yourself, but apparently he doesn't care, though he tells you that his brother Papyrus very much does. Immediately we're given the impression that this is one lazy skeleton. A few moments later and we're introduced to Papyrus, the eccentric, clanky skeleton who Sans calls his brother. There's an immediate contrast between these two characters. While Papyrus is loud and ridiculous, Sans is relaxed and understated, making everything he does seem even more cool by comparison. While Papyrus is a lovable character, Sans is made even more likeable when we realise how much he really is the bigger brother in this relationship. It's hard not to feel that without Sans, Papyrus would likely be in a much worse position. Sans is always looking out for him, even if he can't resist making the occasional subtle jab at his brother, as siblings are known to do. It's no wonder that most players immediately begin to like Sans then. Papyrus is a character we sometimes feel pity and sympathy for, but we know that he has Sans looking out for him. Anyone who has a little brother or sister probably found these two immediately relatable. Not to mention if you're a fan of puns and bad jokes, Sans will no doubt swiftly rise to become your favourite character of all time. If he isn't saying something cryptic and ominous, he's going on about how he got a skelly ton of work done today, or something along those lines. This alone would earn Sans his place amongst the roster of characters in Undertale. However, there's a lot more to him than just his sibling rivalry with Papyrus, and his influence goes far beyond what's seen in Snowdin Forest. If you imagined that would be the last you saw of this curious individual, then you thought very wrong indeed. For Sans is perhaps the single most recurring character in Undertale, and you even accompany him on several meals out, where he tells you unnerving truths. He's mysterious, funny, and as cool as it comes. It's really no wonder he's such a popular character. So we know a little bit about his backstory, and we can hazard a guess as to what makes him so popular with most players. But, as I promised, there's a lot more to Sans than what's seen on the surface. Let's take a look at some of the more obscure elements about his character. For starters, his mysterious abilities that aren't quite explained within the game itself. For example, there's this bizarre scene in Snowdin, 
Outside the mountain that notably contains the secret developer room, Sans is seen teleporting between two positions. How could he possibly go from side to side instantaneously if he isn't teleporting? This isn't the only time Sans does this either. Sans is extremely fond of his shortcuts. On the two occasions within the game, where you go with him to a nearby diner, he takes a so-called shortcut each time. These shortcuts are never explained, and the direction he takes typically would put him further away from where he ends up. Therefore are we to assume that he extends his power of teleportation to you, in order to quickly get you from point A to B. As you saw within the previous clip, he went right to reach Grillby's when there's no shortcut ahead within Waterfall that would lead him there. When at Metaton Resort, he takes us to a back alley. We could assume there's a back entrance there, but within the resort itself, it's nowhere to be seen. It seems quite safe to say that Sans is capable of teleporting, even if he never tells us. I've also seen it mentioned that he can seemingly stop time. When within Grillby's, he tells us a secret about Papyrus, that the skeleton has been talking to a flower. However, during this moment everything within the diner seems to freeze. There's very little animation to begin with, but Grillby has definitely been frozen in place. I believe this is just to place emphasis on the scene, but Sans does have a connection to time travel. One of the biggest secrets within the game is that Sans recognises you as a time traveller. He gives you catchphrases only he would know should you return to him, which, if you do three times, he'll give you a key to his room in Snowdin. More on that in a bit. During the battle with him, should you be someone who's gone down the genocide route, he'll comment that the anomalies you've been causing in the timeline have been monitored. Therefore, if Sans can't control time, we know at the very least he does know how to monitor time. The we he references is still yet to be determined. Alfie's perhaps, or someone else. While we're on the topic, it seems worth pointing out that during his fight, Sans explains it's his knowledge that you're going to end everything that makes him lethargic and unwilling to give things his all. Therefore, it's strongly implied that he isn't really a lazy bones, he's just depressed. To be honest, I think I would be too, knowing that my fate is entirely in the hands of someone I can't trust. Uh, well, good thing he can trust me, right? There's another detail to the Sans fight worth mentioning. His attack where he summons strangely shaped skulls to blast you with energy is unlike anything else in the game, and is an ability unique to Sans. To be honest, I normally wouldn't take much note of it and think of it as anything more than a fancy attack. However, if you dig deep into the game's files, you will discover something very revealing about the nature of this ability. If you rip the sprites from the game and trawl through the list, you will discover the same skulls that appear in the Sans fight. They're called none other than Gaster Blasters, a name shared with the secretive Gaster, whose presence within the game is temperamental at best. Unless this attack was originally intended for a battle with Gaster, are we to presume that Sans actually has some relation to the mysterious character? While there's very little evidence to support this, there is one possibility. Returning to Sans' secret room, we find several very strange pieces of information. There's multiple photos of Sans standing next to people you don't recognise. Who could they be? Gaster? Other players, maybe. There's also a strange machine that appears to be broken, along with blueprints written in illegible symbols. It's quite likely that these are Wingdings, the same font that Gaster speaks in. We can only guess what the machine does. My guess is that it's his device that enables him to monitor time. As we know Gaster was the former royal scientist, could it be that he built it for Sans? There's one last notable detail within the room. In one of the drawers, Sans has a badge. Um, hopefully it's not the Franklin badge from Earthbound. In my theory video that suggested that the undead monsters were formerly humans, I explained that Sans is likely the soul of justice. If that's the case, that means he owns the cowboy hat and gun found in Bratty and Catty's shop, as well as during the fight with Photoshop Flowey. Therefore, I don't think it's a stretch to say that this could be a sheriff's badge. Though, of course, this is just my speculation. It could be anything, just once again, hopefully not the Franklin badge. So those are the facts. As for theorising about Sans, we could go on for hours. As much as I like a good theory, I'd rather not do that. We're not quite done though. During my research, I stumbled across something that really shouldn't have been seen. Photoshop Flowey is kind of scary. Meeting Charo on the genocide run is a fair bit worse. The secret rooms we haven't even covered yet are pretty messed up as well, but this is something far more terrible than any of those things. Does there really need to be pages upon pages upon pages of so-called erotic fanfiction about Sans? This is slightly disturbing, people. I'd say show Papyrus some love as well, but it seems you already have. Anyhow, I'm getting out of here. Lastly, because I'm legally obligated to ask this question, is Sans Ness? There's undeniably the odd bit of evidence that could indicate he is. However, I earnestly believe he is not. Toby Fox may be a tremendous Earthbound fan, and I believe it's for that same reason he would think better than to include a character from it that isn't his own in Undertale. This is one theory I'd really rather not believe, because it needlessly combines the universes of two games that work perfectly well by themselves. 
Also, from a factual standpoint, there's plenty of other theories that could explain any similarities between the two characters, such as the badge being a sheriff's badge rather than the Franklin badge. Unless Toby himself says otherwise, I think it's safe to say that no, Sans is not Ness. Well, that's it for Sans. I realise I didn't go into where his powers come from too much. The truth is, it's impossible to say. Maybe he's the protege of Gaster and knows how to use extremely advanced technology. Maybe he has a little bit of determination like the player. Also, does he bleed when you defeat him, or is it just ketchup? I wish I could say, but truthfully, no one really knows. It's just something else to speculate about, and maybe deserving of its own video. We'll get around to it, I'm sure. Until then, though... <laughs>